We're working with TV show formats and seeing how we can make those work in our webinars and talks. And coming up in the next seven minutes, I'm going to take a look at TV genres. We're going to discuss uh, retention lines a little more detail. And we're also going to look at the various elements that you find when you look at a television show. So as we start to work with how genres really work, I can say this to you, there's something that is super addictive about television and it is the way that the structure is created and I want you to take a moment to think a little bit about the kind of genres of television that you enjoy or that you may be interested in. Now these are the top genres in Europe. This is a, a test that was done or a research that was done in uh, 2018 in across, across about 44 countries. And what you can see here is how the different show genres stack up. And you can see that generally there's a really good balance between sitcom, um, talk and variety shows and sport obviously that's high. And then it just gets higher and higher when it gets to sci-fi which is popular, crime drama and of course action adventure which is a great favorite because it is a kind of a generic thing that everybody likes or more people tend to like and those are sort of the percentages but the moment you start seeing this you get a sense of the kind of genres and you start thinking about the kind of ones that you watch news variety whether it is comedy that you like is it sitcom that you like and these shows really are so intrinsic to what we talk about in boardrooms and when we tell people about a new show, a new series we've seen on Netflix or so, there's always something and there's, there's, here's just uh, some fun that a, a comic artist made of what those shows sort of represent if you look at their durations in 30 minutes or 60 minutes or 100, 120 or whatever it may be. I would like to talk through at least three really interesting ones with you because I think that there's something that we can glean from those and let's work through to see what these formats have at the heart of them as elements that we can go and use. Now, if you had to look at the news, generally the news has uh, these elements. There's headlines, they move to global, then local news, they have sport, weather, and then general in interest towards the end. And if you look at the kind of elements that you find in there, sometimes the newsreader just reads something cold. Other times they have inserts and stories. They have field reporters they cross to. And then, of course, the live studio situation moves forward along with guests and sometimes uh, graphics and show graphics and so on. If you had to look at the retention line of news, you'd find that it usually has a high spike at the beginning when people tune in to see the highlights. There's usually a spike around, of, around about sport, particularly over weekends, and then there's a general sort of decline again. And this is kind of typical of a news profile for a retention line because people know the format, they know when they're going to tune in to watch what it is that they want to see and they move on. Somebody may just stay for the weather and so they will just come in towards the end of the news to tune in and watch it. If you look at something like talk shows, talk shows have a little bit of a different format. There's usually a teaser up front that tells you what they're going to talk about or who they're going to have on the show. There's a first guest, a second guest, the superstar guest, and usually uh, look at the Graham Norton show. There's a music element towards the end, um, perhaps a giveaway or something interesting like this. And uh, so the, the idea is that you would never have seen somebody give away a conversation with a big star in the beginning of the show because nothing is going to keep the audience there until the end. And so the purpose is constantly designed to keep people in by telling them what's coming up and then having this segment and continuing to tease, maybe back announce, but always move forward generally in the show. And if you go and look at the format, the elements are gossip, reveals, novelty, there's live music, there's giveaways. This is usually how those talk shows look in terms of a retention line. It's quite erratic. It bounces up and down and people tune in and out as they see things fit, go to other channels, graze elsewhere, come back and so on. You've got to remember that television uh, audience retention lines are measured only once off. They're not like a Netflix where you're simply going to watch as far as you like and if you want to move forward, you're going to spool or you're going to go to another channel. I'm talking about te classic television format. The next one I want to show you is this, which is game and quiz show, which has an interesting uh, format. You usually have a teaser up front and then there's the elimination rounds of it. Reality shows follow this format as well. And ultimately you have a winner. Now there's an everyman nature. We talked about the addictiveness of television and this is particularly uh, prominent here where 
there's always an underdog that we root for. There's somebody that has a little bit of an out of focus kind of quality. And the variety of the kind of guests that they usually have make it that there's a profile or the kind of a personality that could broadly appeal to just about everybody watching. And that's what makes this thing so incredibly addictive. Again, you've got to see which of these elements you can use in your talk but now we're going to look at this retention line. And what's interesting is quiz and game shows have a high peak and they generally have a very gentle decline. Sometimes people just tune in at the end of the show and in television, mostly we found this would have been because they're getting ready to watch the next show. But there's something interesting in this space. And so, again, what can we do with what this knowledge is and transfer and go and use it in our next presentation? Well, off the bat, I want to tell you about some of those great, great items that we can borrow from the world of the news, right? The first thing would be to look at a teaser up front or a headline. It's always important to go, coming up in the show, this is what we have. Um, in today's news report, this is the highlight and so on. Change the pace, you know, use a quiz, use a poll, see if you can throw forward. This is an element we see often in radio. The drive in the morning, if you like, is designed to keep audiences flowing through and also keeping them in for as long as possible. So you'll often have the radio announcer remind you of what the topic is. They'll back announce about people they've spoken to before or calls they've taken and they'll cast forward by saying we'd love to hear from you and coming up in the next moment before the news we're going to have this and this and that and the other. It's always designed in order to make that experience flow for the audience and to keep them in so that they know where they are. That's a very important element. See if you can have pre-recorded clips, moments where you can take a drink of water, moments where you can reframe. Could you place breaks? Have you got sponsorship mes messages and so on? And always see if there's a surprise or some element that you can keep for the end in order to keep the audience going. Right now we're going to look at an exercise and for this exercise I'd like you to look at some handy genre elements that you could use. Take a first st stab at a genre and content element that you could go and use by using this download. Just take it for the moment. Don't worry too much about how you're going to produce it or where you're going to get it or, or so. We're going to talk about it later in this workshop particularly. But for now, just start thinking about where you could spice up your talk by having these kind of elements that help you to gear shift and keep it interesting for your audience.